Welcome to Unit 3 of Geometry, in which we discuss parallel lines and transversals. <laughs> this is one of my favorite units in geometry. I, I really don't know if I can completely explain why. I just really like it. Um, I think uh, parallel lines, I think transversals, and, and all these relationships, and just some simple vocabulary with really simple relationships that get repeated over and over again. We'll see this again when we hit triangles and all these other things. It just it just applies in so many places. And it's really quite useful if we're talking about construction or any of these other things. Some of these ideas are really, really important. So let's dive in. This is going to be basically a, a completely vocabulary um intensive unit we're going to we're not going to this may be good news we are going to do proofs in this unit for sure in this particular um, in this particular lesson we're not going to do any new proofs or anything like that in fact I, I don't even think if I remember right we hit any we'll see as I hit go through our notes but I, I don't really think we hit any examples it's just a bunch of new vocabulary words uh, which is very common for a first lesson in geometry so let's start with what is a parallel line now you kind of know what parallel lines are already, right? That's that's something you know. You know, if I ask you what's a parallel line, you know, so people are gonna come and do this, right? You know, stick your hands up there and be like, this this is what a parallel line is. Now, that's absolutely what parallel lines is, because this is geometry. We've got to get a little bit more specific because there's one thing that we've got to add to it. If I was to ask you to define in words a parallel line, you probably would say something like two lines that never touch which is true. However, that isn't quite enough, which when we get to our second set of definitions, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But let's get a formal definition for uh, parallel lines. So parallel lines are coplanar lines. And that's the, that's the key there, is parallel lines are lines that are on the same plane that never intersect. Now, one thing that's worth noting here is the new symbol that we're adding to this. Oops, I need to turn off that. Give me half a second. There we go. Um, is this new symbol right here. This this symbol, the two little arrows like that, our textbook often draws them in pink, but they don't have to be pink. That's just two arrows in the middle of lines like that. That says parallel. That says that line JK in this example is parallel, <coughs> excuse me, to line LM. That's what those lines mean. So if we need to be more specific. We need to kind of give a counter example to, because there are two exa two examples. My words are fumbling around on this video. It's going to be okay. Hopefully it's happy and funny and whatever else, or at least not horrendous. But if not all lines that never intersect are parallel, what would be a line that is not parallel, but also doesn't intersect? Well, it would be what is called a skew line. Skew lines are lines that don't intersect, but they're not on the same plane. So parallel lines are like this. But if I take lines and I just twist them ever so slightly and make them on two separate planes out here, they're still never going to touch because the planes that they're on are parallel. But they, <coughs> excuse me, they these two lines are still never going to intersect. Now you could actually, because of three dimensional space, you they don't even have to be on parallel planes. Like if we had lines that are kind of like this, they're still, it's hard to see in, in what I'm showing you. Lines like this, they're still never going to touch, right? But they're, they're, not, they're not even on parallel planes. And so that lines that don't intersect but are not parallel or not coplanar, they're called skew lines. And parallel planes are planes, of course, that never intersect. That one's pretty, pretty straightforward. Now, the title of this lesson was Parallel Lines and Transversal. So what is a transversal? A transversal is a line in which two, which intersects two or more coplanar lines. So we've got a, we've got line, um, let me add something to write with. We've got line Q and line R, which are, which are coplanar. And then we've got this transversal L, which intersects both of those lines. Okay, so in this case, L is an example of a transversal. Now, there's a bunch of vocabulary that lives around this thing. That's why I've labeled all these angles, because we, have, we, we need to be able to talk about which angle we're discussing and which angles, because there are some special relationships which we'll learn in later lessons. In this particular lesson, we're kind of just 
laying out the vocabulary. This is a this and that's a that, right? That's what we're doing in this lesson. Later, we'll see how they're related and, and all these kind of things. So the first thing we're going to talk about is interior angle. So we're going to describe this. Oops, I keep doing that to myself. We're going to describe this by listing them, okay? So if we have two li the two lines in question that the transversal cuts, that's kind of where we're talking about interior and exterior. So it, we, we kind of got to look at it this way. So, you know, it the, these, I, I find it, it, some people really struggle with some of these definitions and some people really don't. And so I'm going to try to be as clear as I can. You can, of course, always ask questions in class or on our class Discord server or in the comments if you're just watching on YouTube. But <clears throat> we're talking about in relation, you can kind of think about it almost as if as if th this was kind of a box, essentially, right? Where where we've got inside the box, between inside the two lines that the transversal is cutting. So the interior angles in this in this particular example would be angle three, angle four, angle five, and angle six. Those would be the interior angles. Now. The opposite of that would, of course, be, let me bring this up a little higher. The opposite of that would be the exterior angles. Let me kind of add a little line separating these two. So those would be the ones that are on the outside of kind of that imaginary box that we're drawing, right? So that would be these guys on the outside. So in this example, it would be angles one. Oops, what am I writing? <laughs> Angle one angle two, angle seven, and angle eight. Okay, so those, so we've got kind of inside interior angles and exterior area outside angles. Now this would be true, like if we had a example that looked like this, you can even draw it kind of a little different than this, this picture, I don't even know, something along these lines, cut by a transversal, the interior on this guy would be inside the two lines. The exterior would be on the outside. So see if it's turned inside. So this would be the inside, interior, <laughs> and this would be the exterior. That's getting a little wild and crazy, but hope, hopefully that's more help than harm. All right. So the next piece of vocabulary on this is consecutive or I prefer the term and when I first learned it I learned same side interior I like that and I like it better because of because uh, one it it kind of makes sense because we're comparing to the transversal and number two is because it helps us remember this is a spoiler alert but same side supplementary and we'll, we'll use that later. But same side, we're talking specifically, and I also kind of mumbled through the way that I like to help you remember it, and that is that consecutive are ones, consecutive means in a row, right? But it, so that's, that's kind of where that comes from. Same side, we're talking about it, we're talking about the same side of the transversal. So same side would be this side or that side of the transversal. So for interior and exterior, we're talking about the two lines that the transversal cuts. But for these next few definitions, we're talking about specifically about the transversal, okay? So <coughs> in this example, the <coughs> same side interior would be three and five and then four and six. So they're in pairs. So angle three and angle five and would be one set. And then the other set of same side interior would be angle four and angle six, right? And then we you can probably figure out what the next one's going to be. The next one's going to be, oh, I don't know why. Where is my, uh-oh, did I accident? Oh, oh, there it is. I don't know why it's way up there in my layers, but there it is. I, I gave away, spoiler, don't look at it. <laughs> Consecutive exterior, right? So that would be same side exterior. So angle one and angle seven, and then angle two with angle eight. 
right? So angle two and with that and kind of went crazy and angle eight would be one set. The other set, excuse me, would be angle one and angle seven. Now, I kind of spoiled it because I accidentally popped it up so too soon, but alternate interior are kind of the other way around. So, well, not the other way around. They're, they alternate. They're on opposite sides. They kind of, they're on alternate sides, opposite sides of the transversal. So this these four vocabulary is going to be in the middle because I think you can probably figure out what this one's going to be. They are talking specifically or related to the transversal. The very last one here is going to be related to both, but we'll get there in a second. So the alternate interior. So again, we're talking about interior, but alternate. So three and six. So opposite sides of the transversal. Okay, so angle three and angle six would be alternate interior. Crisscrossy, right? And then... Angle <coughs> four and angle five would be alternate interior. Now you can probably guess and you'd be right that the next one is alternate exterior. So that would be opposite sides of the transversal, but on the exterior of the two lines, right? So angle one and angle eight would be a pair of alternate exterior. Angle one and angle eight, and then angle two and angle seven. Angle two and angle seven would be alternate exterior. There's one more sort of vocabulary bit with transversals, and that is corresponding. Uh, this one, it kind of, if you want to think about it as kind of combining these two, the this top section and then this bottom section kind of together, that may be helpful. But corresponding, you know, that, that word, is that supposed to have two R's in it? I feel like that word has two R's in it. Let me, let me see. Let me see. Yes, it is. There's an extra R in there. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Corresponding. They, the word corresponding means go together, right? And so that was, is what we're talking about here. So in this case, we're talking about like one and five. So see, they go together. Two and six, three and seven, four and eight. They go together, okay? It's gonna, when we look at parallel lines, I think it's gonna even be more, more obvious. So these... Consecutive exterior interior and alternate exterior interior are, they have two sets of pairs with corresponding, there are four sets of pairs, okay? So we're talking about angle one and angle five as one set. And then angle three with angle seven would be the other set. Angle three and angle angle seven and then angle two with angle six angle two and angle six and then the next one would be or the last one would be angle four and angle eight angle four and angle eight okay that is pretty much where we are, although I want to leave you with a remi a vocabulary reminder. A, uh, you, you might put in the, in the comments below or, or some other, other place. Where are the vertical angles? Vertical angle pairs in this, in this picture. Also, where are the linear pair? pairs, sets, okay? So where are the vertical angles and where are the linear pairs? Because we want to make sure we're, keep, we're as we're learning new vocabulary, we hang on to this old vocabulary. Also, how are vertical angles related? I'll give you that one for free. Vertical angles 
are congruent, linear pairs are supplementary. So there's some new vocabulary and a little quick reminder of some old vocabulary. We'll see you in the next lesson. If you're one of my students, do your homework, see you in class, all the things. If you're not one of my students, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We shall see you guys later. Bye-bye.